Hello, and welcome to World Class, the show that brings you the best of the very best of truly luxury destinations from all over the globe. This time, we are here in the architecturally beautiful city of Prague. Prague is the capital and largest city of what is now the Czech Republic, formerly Czechoslovakia. And residing over it sits Prague Castle, the largest occupied castle in the world, full of treasures to explore. Prepare yourself for a feast of history, architecture, and culture. And what better way to start our day here than on a morning boat journey along the River Vlatava to look up at the wonders that surround us. So it's up anchor and away we sail with a dedicated multi-skilled captain that doesn't just pilot our vessel, but gives an in-depth guide to the city's secrets. Did you know, for instance, that aside from being regularly voted among the 10 most beautiful cities in Europe, it was nearly flooded in 2002, with the river rising to only a few feet below the bridges. But today is calm, and the beauty of the city is starting to sink in. So maybe it's time for some more historical facts as we sail along on our river cruise of Prague. We have here a protected city as, since 1992, it has been part of the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, or UNESCO for short. This ensures that future generations will be able to ponder and learn all the fascinating influences the city has and has given. Prague is really an open-air museum of the highest class and one best explored by boat or foot. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, yes, the famous Charles Bridge that was featured in the blockbuster Mission Impossible is one of the many locations used in the city of Spires for famous Hollywood movies. So now it's time to leave this Hollywood setting to visit another world-class setting that is our stunning hotel for this visit, the Kempinski Hibernska. These elegant arches await your welcome. This hotel is rumored to have once been a palace and then a hospital. Now, however, after meticulous restorations and even the addition of extra floors, the hotel offers sublime and artistic surroundings to relax in. Filled with various works of art and other interesting features, who better to tell us more than the general manager, Mr. Sadat Nemli? Uh, Kempinski was founded in 1897. It's Europe's oldest luxury hospitality group, and uh, we think that we have a perfect fit uh, with Prague. We wanted to be in this city for a long time. Uh, we are known to be in cities like Berlin, uh, Dresden, Moscow, Budapest, Istanbul, uh, Munich, uh, cities that have a lot of cultural resonance, a lot of history to them. And uh, Kempinski uh, wanted to have a home in Prague. Uh, it it, it complements our portfolio. We uh, opened our doors to guests in October 2008 and uh, we had a, a, a launch party at the end of the month on October 30th. Uh, so we're a brand new hotel, uh, barely five months in operation. The artwork you see throughout the hotel is, is rather an interesting mix and match. Uh, it was um, brought together by the, um, our decorators who, uh, who helped us with uh, furnishing, obviously, and, and designing the hotel itself. They um, brought in from the UK um, a private contractor who specializes in providing original artwork for, for hotels. And uh, most of the art you see within the, this hotel uh, by a variety of artists have not been used elsewhere before. But we think it's quite interesting, especially uh, uh, we will alert you to uh, a, a several of our headless men statues which are scattered throughout the second and third floor of the uh, 
of the uh, building, which um, may have some allusion to the fact that uh, in Prague itself uh, there's a statue of a headless man, um, in fact with Franz Kafka on top of it. So uh, there is that's, that affinity, if you like, uh, to the city itself. But um, I think guests will have to see for themselves to make up the plot of, of what the headless man really stands for in our building, because we think there's a story to it and we enc encourage and invite our guests to discover it. And the Kempinski Hibernska is certainly a hotel worth discovering, with excellent restaurants, rooms, gardens, and beautifully marbled corridors with a cool yet warming aura. The hotel features 75 keys, as we call them, mainly suites. Uh, we feature 63 suites, two of which are two-bedroom suites, and the remaining 12 rooms are superior rooms. But the 63 rooms, uh, the two-bedroom suites, one of them is our presidential suite, and the other one is our bohemia suite, and the remaining 61 are one-bedroom suites themselves. There are few suites to compare with this presidential apartment with its large decking area and views over the garden, jacuzzi, dining table for 14, lounge, office area, and of course, open plan kitchen. We believe um, our room sizes are compared very favorably to um, our immediate competitors in Prague. I think we offer the most generous rooms and we've adopted the slogan, the luxury of space in the heart of Prague, which, because we believe for our type of customer, the luxury traveler, space is of premium value. Yes, Mr. Nemli is quite right, as finding space in a city that has been built since the 11th century is not always such an easy task. So rest assured that your stay at this hotel will most certainly not be a cramped one. The world-class team stayed in a standard room far smaller than the Bohemia suite featured here. And again, it was more like a mini apartment than a mere room. But of course it would be, as it is world-class hotels we're talking about and not anything less. Ah, the wonders of visiting this part of the world in spring. What was sunshine and warmth a few hours ago has now turned into a slight chill and snow flurries are falling into the lovely courtyard garden of the hotel. Everything here is done on a large scale, including the wonderful burgers. it's time to leave this grand hotel for the time being and enjoy some more of this wonderful city with a stroll up to Prague Castle to burn off some of the hearty hotel food we so much enjoyed. The castle is full of surprises, which you will shortly see. However, it all starts off beautifully with the hourly changing of the guard dressed in their national regalia and a brand of sunglasses made famous by Tom Cruise in Top Gun. So, true to nature, the clouds have dispersed and the sun comes to shine on us yet again, bringing this city to life. And maybe this is an apt time for a quote from the writer Penelope Gilead. Prague is a vertical Venice, steps everywhere. The Prague Castle is the biggest castle complex in the world which is still inhabited. So that means there are still people living there and it's also the seat of the most important uh, person in this country, which is now the president. He doesn't live there, but he can use his apartment there. The cathedral is the St. Vitus Cathedral, and it took 600 years to complete that building. So they started in uh, 1344 under Charles IV, and in 1930, approximately, it has been uh, almost finished. It's Gothic, uh, they inspired themselves by the cathedrals in southern France and uh, uh, actually also one of the first architects was from northern France, uh, a certain Matthias of Arras. 
you will see uh, in the cathedral uh, that there's a lot of space and the walls are uh, usually not completely filled and there are huge windows, uh, stained glass windows, which I really recommend to have a look at. It is through these vast amounts of colored windows that the sun sets on the west and before it settles behind the Bohemian mountains, the pillars of the church come alive with sublime colors. This cathedral has so many beautiful glass windows that you'll risk straining your neck trying to admire them all. And that wouldn't be surprising as the cathedral is over 95 meters in height and 320 in length. There are various tombs within the cathedral, one belonging to John of Nepomuk, which is covered in over two tons of silver, who became a saint shortly after his death. But the most significant is that of King Wenceslas himself. Wenceslas, uh, he uh, became the first king of Bohemia who was uh, a Christian and uh, his brother uh, let him be killed and afterwards he became a saint. The most um, holy place here in this country, uh, it's the Saint uh, Wenceslas uh, Chapel and uh, the grave stayed on the same place uh, since the 10th century until now. So, of course, at that time there was only a round Romanesque church and later it has been uh, uh, rebuilt in a, in a bigger shape and now on the same place since the 14th century is the cathedral. The outside of St. Vitus is adorned with complex carvings and sculptures that really shows off its Gothic status. Its spires reach for the sky, so that even behind the 570-meter wall of the castle, they can be seen from the city below. As we walked around the huge castle grounds, we came across another of its hidden little secrets, a magical street called Golden Lane. The Golden Lane is in the very um, back part of the castle, a very narrow lane with tiny houses built next to the fortification wall. And in the 16th century, there uh, was a legend that the alchemists would live there. And uh, they were trying to make artificial gold. And also they were looking for the stone of the wise and elixir for eternal life. Uh, until now, you can see that the, those houses, they are uh, it's possible to visit them inside, there are some shops and uh, in one of the, the houses, number 22, uh, Franz Kafka would live too in 1916. A perfect little street and ideal for window shopping. Certainly this young lady has a new take on that phrase. So it's back to the town center, of which there are actually two. One is in the lesser quarter on one side of the river and the other is here in the old town. I would say that uh, for people who are interested in architecture, Prague is like an open book. You can see 12 centuries of architecture on a rather small uh, surface, protected uh, by UNESCO now, and it has been preserved uniquely in the world. Uh, there has been no much, not much damage during Second World War, for instance. So uh, I would uh, mention for, uh, the Gothic period, uh, a nice example of a Gothic structure is the bridge, which is now it used to be the Stone Bridge, but now it's called the Charles Bridge. Named after King Charles IV, whose influence played a key role in Prague's design. But here we have our friend St. John of Nepomuk, whose statue is thought to bring good luck to all that touch it. Well, all those hands have certainly kept it shining. The bridge has a total of 30 statues and a slightly eerie feel. So for all the historians out there, you will no doubt know that up until recent years, the Czech Republic was under communist rule. But in 1989, the government was freed, allowing Western brands to enter and shopping to begin. His name is famous the world round by being immortalized in the Christmas Carol. But good King Wenceslas was in fact the Duke of Bohemia, ruler of Prague. Here, with the Grand Natural History Museum in the background is Wenceslas Square. 
It's time to drag ourselves away from the hustle and bustle of the streets and head up to the hills that overlook the city and visit a famous landmark that bears an amazing resemblance to the Eiffel Tower in Paris. After a leisurely stroll through the Rose Gardens, we arrive to the significant steel structure that is Petrin Tower. Modeled after its famous counterpart in France, it was built only a couple of years later in 1891. Although not as tall, standing only 60 meters, it is located on top of Petrin Hill, which is in fact over 310 meters high. Once you have managed to overcome your vertigo and tackle the 299 steps that lead you up to the viewing platform, you can see that the views are truly outstanding. It's really a great day out for all the family, and when your feet are tired from the steps and strolls, then there's always Pony Express. So, back to the stunning views. Here, from the lower hills, the Vltava River, the longest in the Czech Republic, gently makes its way gracefully through the middle of Prague. Prague is great fun to explore. The Old Square is a must on any tourist's checklist and is home to a rather interesting clock with possibly an even more interesting story. The astrological clock is located on Old Town Square on the uh, tower of the city hall and uh, during daytime every hour you can see the 12 apostles passing by on that astronomical clock. You can see there also uh, three different uh, types of time uh, which uh, you have to really look closely to discover uh, what time it is. There's also a legend connected with this clock. One of the clockmakers has been blinded uh, in order uh, that he would not make uh, the same clock somewhere else. And uh, even though he was blind, he took revenge. He made a mistake uh, in the clock and uh, for a hundred years nobody could uh, find out uh, how to uh, how to, uh, to repair the clock. So that's, that really happened. Fortunately, everything seems to be working just fine now. And having been blinded by astrological science, time is now moving on. So we take a final look at the wonderful artwork on the buildings of the Old Town Square and take a short walk past the Gothic Church of Our Lady. Back to our hotel for a refreshing drink in the Two Steps Bar. The light reflects off the original arches, bringing out the grandeur of this room with its fireplace in the conservatory. This is just the perfect way to unwind and relax after a sightseeing trip around Prague. Busy as bees in the kitchen, head chef Merrick Fickner and his team are preparing to impress their evening clientele with exquisite dishes from all over the world. But we'll let Merrick tell you more about that. The name of the restaurant is La Grill, but it's not a steakhouse. If somebody would imagine after under the name La Grill Steakhouse, it's, it's a fine dining restaurant with uh, international cuisine and has a touch of Mediterranean cuisine and some of the Czech dishes as well. My, I have a few signature dishes. Um, one of the signature dishes as a starter is uh, grilled tiger shrimps on green peas puree, pancetta chip, and balsamico reduction. Design of the restaurant, it's, uh, it's pretty much modern style restaurant. We have, uh, for example, very interesting is we have the background with the lights. We can change uh, for different uh, scene of the, of the light. We have in the middle of the restaurant is hanging a large uh, red chandelier. And um, yeah, it's pretty much modern style of the, of the restaurant. The style of my cuisine is international. Uh, fusion cuisine with uh, Mediterranean touch. I have as well some few Czech dishes, but mainly it's um, international, international food. I have worked uh, for two years in Saudi Arabia and there is a uh, Lebanese kitchen, for example, very much popular. So I have some touch of a uh, few dishes Lebanese. When we have, for example, buffet for our guests, we have hummus there, mutabal, and um, the guests, they love it, yeah. And certainly the world-class team did as well. So we toast your cuisine, Merrick, and thank you for all those extra pounds we put on during our stay. 
The darkness has set in, but the lights are all on in the courtyard garden, illuminating this hotel to its full glory. Prague is a cornucopia of fine restaurants, so for those wishing to try a night somewhere else, well then look no further to find the wonderful Villa Richter. The building was built in well, 1836 by Mr. Richter. Then it was taken away from him in the Second World War. It also worked as an embassy of Cuba, and then it was used for Czech secret services. Well, this is one secret we didn't want to keep. The conservatory is the room with the view at the villa, and with a unique grapevine made of crystal glass that oozes blue light, it creates the perfect setting for a romantic meal. The vine cell it used to be dungeon when it was uh, actually for the secret services, and now it is a vine cellar, which is actually built in a cliff. We have over 2,500 bottles and over 450 different types of wine. The best wine in our cellar is Chateau Giscour, which is coming from the village Labad in France, in Margot. Then you would need to prepare about 3,500 US dollars to actually purchase and try the wine. Not quite on our budget this time, but we will be back. And who wouldn't with nighttime views over St. Nicholas Cathedral, Charles Bridge and Prague Castle, and so much more. The city of 100 spires comes into its own after the sun sets, and this time is illuminated with artificial light of differing colors to bring the most out of all this wondrous architecture. However, the city is still very much alive, even with live entertainment on the bridge for passers-by. And, in a classical but non-musical way, the buildings entertain just by being themselves. So now it's time to set sail and leave this city of history and culture to find a new world-class location for next time. Till then, goodbye.